up to Oregon State? Good morning. Good morning. And in answer to your question, no, they do not have the organ fixed. The organ is sort of on life support. <laughs> and so they will, I think Gail said, they figured out what most of the problems are. But so if you hear, if it starts to sound like Halloween or whatever, it's not Gail's fault. The organ still has kind of a mind of its own. And it, how old did you say it was, Gail? He says at least 45. It's at least 45 years old. So it's going through a midlife crisis. I'm at least 90 and I'm still going. <laughs> so, but it is nice that they were able to at least get it so that Gail's able to it use it a little good. bit. It sounds good. It does sound good. Thank you, Gail. Okay, several things. Uh, the crop walk is already next Sunday. And it, it, Sam, do we know who from our church, if anybody's doing this? I know Ruth used to do it, other people, but they're not uh, able to. Is anybody here doing the crop walk? Okay, if not, I bet if you ask around, there's probably some people in town we could. There's, I sent a few to Andrew. Um, okay. And there's two or three items in our The sheets. I'm guessing that if you want to make a contribution toward that, we can all just send you. That we'll get it there. Okay. Well, it's actually supposed to be like 90 degrees next Sunday, so hopefully. Great way. Now the other thing is, somebody asked, uh, we don't have an insert for the food bank, but do you know what they need, Sandy? Uh, Kenny bought a lot this week, that, and that's all we will take care of. We need anything but. Anything but. Green beans. Green beans. So basic canned vegetables, but not green beans. Okay, not spinach. No canned spinach. No spinach, no beets, you know, ordinary things. Growing up, I thought spinach was the worst thing God ever made. Then I figured out it actually tastes pretty good when it isn't slimy in a can. And we were when we were in Europe, or Ireland way back when, Pam hates it worse than I do. And guess what we had like three or four meals in a row? Canned spinach. And they were very insulted if you didn't eat what was on your plate, so I got to eat mine and hers. Thank God it wasn't liver. Uh, we are glad to see Pastor Nate back. And speaking with him briefly, on the plus side, he had a good trip. And on the even better side, he did not come back with an accent. So we feel good about that. Sandy, the office will be closed tomorrow, right? You're going to be for a uh, Brett Commission trip. Uh, that's pretty far ahead. We still need, I haven't been by. Uh, what, is the Parsonage lawn in pretty good shape or does it need mowed now? It was mowed. It was mowed. Okay, well, we should be okay then, because even though we've had a little bit of rain and it's warm, we've got a lot less sunlight, so we should be in pretty good shape. And right now, the selling of it's kind of on hold, so we need to keep it up. Mark your calendars for, it's a Monday, the November 16th? Does that sound right? We are going to be hosting uh, the church conference, so it'll be ourselves, Antrim, and Stafford. Uh, before we get to birthdays and such, are there any other announcements that we need to make? Anything coming up? It was a good day. Stafford won Friday night. Second, K-State probably got a lot of people's pacemakers going. They won. And for all you KU fans, they didn't lose. So... Birthdays. Sorry, Gail. I just had it. Uh, okay, the olives aren't here, but if you see to share our trucks, I am, you know, happy birthday coming up next Sunday. Uh, Cleo has a birthday. Is that true, Cleo? I'm just curious. Uh, if you're willing to share, how old will you be? How old will you be? Yeah, how old will you be, you know? I'm guessing 75. 
89. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been around college students all week and you know what kind of hygiene they have. Uh, let's sing Happy Birthday to Cleo.
of offering on that side. And Steve, could you help here? And uh, Mark, would you help Joe in the middle? Hey, Mark. I, I figured you did. Thank you. Okay. This is Acts 26, 28, maybe. Agrippa said to Paul, are you so quickly persuading me to become a Christian? The word of God for the people of God. Well, good morning. I hear some voices out here that might be affected by ragweed and other special things at this time of year, like screaming too loudly at football games night after night over the weekend. Um, that's kind of where my voice is this morning. So, uh, it's good to be back. It's good to be. Uh, it's good to know that you survived Kim Ellis's preaching, and. <laughs> And uh, evidently he didn't, because he's gone this weekend. <laughs> but it's good to see you all here. Uh, had a wonderful experience at Mount Sequoia in uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas. And I expected it to be up in the mountains apart from Fayetteville. See, I'm from California. The mountains are separated from cities. And uh, But this was like right there within the city, and it overlooked the city, and it was beautiful. But I uh, have some new friends, and uh, my roommate was actually Korean, and uh, he's been in the United States for 11 years. And uh, just hearing him tell stories, uh, for example, uh, he was in China and met a North Korean in China. And when the uh, North Korean found out that he was a pastor, he began weeping and asking, would you please serve me communion? I haven't had any for 35 years. And uh, that, to me, tells uh, of not only how valuable our, our Lord's Supper is and how important it is uh, for faith and for life of the Christian, but also how fortunate we are um, to be recipients of that uh, as often as we do. So, but uh, I have a, a number of new friends and colleagues and it's uh, it's been a, a wonderful experience. But glad to be back. Um, I want to spend some time this morning in prayer. Uh, Marlene, would you like to share your situation tomorrow? or? Well, I will be having a knee replacement in Friday. Okay. And what time is that? Well, I have to be there at 6, so it'll okay. be early. So it'll be early. So please, as you wake in the morning, please pray for uh, Marlene. Any other prayer requests this morning? Okay. Uh, Sandy, do you have any details? I know Farrell Dean uh, hurt her knee. Yeah. Is that correct? Anybody have details? Yeah. I have, I went to see her uh, just before surgery and was able to pray with her and she had a couple of children with her and uh, they, she had a fracture of the kneecap and, uh, and so they surgically repaired that and um, she's supposed to be moving to a swing bed in Stafford on Monday. Um, so I'm sure that she would appreciate our, our continued prayer for her as well. Well, I have prayers for for uh, Janice Saylor. She's in serious condition, St. Francis Hospital. I heard yesterday too that she will be brought back to uh, Stafford Swing Bed. Oh my goodness! <coughs> she was the one that had the, the brain bleed, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But she had a bicep. Oh, she did. Oh, no. 
Yes. Thank you. But how about uh, joy wise? I did want to. Kim came in last week and really, you could tell he put a lot of time and effort in it. And he put together the whole service, right, Sandy? Yes, he did. And he also went to Antrim and did it, which is quite a. For those of you that might know, that's good that we were able to have that happen. And the other thing is there were 400 screaming, yelling kids out at Cheyenne Bombs yesterday catching butterflies. <laughs> so they don't always have to play sports and they don't always have to be in front of a computer. And from my standpoint, the best thing was we had a lot of Hispanic families there. And with everything going on in this country, vis-a-vis -vis immigrants and stuff, it's probably pretty important that we all find a way to get along. And so that was very, very positive. You know the joys? Yes, sir. Yesterday morning, I had the most wonderful joys out at the back of my shop. <coughs> Bobby Steinmetz and his trucking bus met there to clean up a lot of that junk up that back there to make demonstrations on it. But we may get rid of it, so uh, one of your local members there, Hudson, was a part of that crew. And they got it all cleaned up, so when you drive down the alley, you can see how clean it looks behind that building. <laughs> I drove through I've got there. one thing left, and that's one of those seven foot diameter reflectors. I've got another one inside, and I'm going to set up somewhere to make what they call a hiss whispering gallery. I saw this up in Chicago at the building of science and industry. And the space is about 100 feet apart. You can stand in front of one of them at the focal point, and at the focal point of you can hear what they say. That's something I can set up in the park somewhere where it would be, I think, a really uh, good demonstration. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are that you love us, that you approached us while we were still sinners, that you became flesh and dwelt among us, that you are the light in the darkness. 
that you are peace in the valley, that you are the new mercy every morning. Lord, for these and many blessings, we are grateful. Father, we thank you for this place of worship that we can join together. And Lord, we remember the words of Jesus in John chapter 17, as he prayed for our unity. He prayed for our unity. Lord, I pray that you would flood this people, this church, with the spirit of unity. Lord, our denomination also needs this very same spirit. Many issues coming up in the next year and we we just ask that uh, the most important thing to you become the most important thing to us. And that is that we are one as you are also one. Lord, we give thanks for Kim and his giftedness. We thank you, Lord, that, uh, that he was able to serve us this last Sunday. And we ask you a blessing upon him. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that he had to also share with Andrew and, uh, and the people there. And so we give you praise for that. Lord, we thank you that, um, that there is that sign of, of renewal in a relationship between the two churches. And Lord, we also pray for the unity of this people, this nation, um, with so many issues facing our day and so many people taking a polarized position, we ask that uh, that you would help us to unite as a one as one people, as Americans. Help us to be compassionate, as is our heritage. Help us to be loving toward our neighbors, even if they disagree, even if they are from a different religion, a religious background. Help us to be one. Father, we thank you for uh, the testimony that, that people are helping people. And uh, Jim shared that and, and just we're grateful that, that uh, you have given this nation in that kind of spirit, that we help each other out when we have needs. Thank you, Lord, for family and the value that comes from them as we can uh, live and grow and, and hurt and, and have joy, uh, joyful times together. These two we give you thanks for. And Lord, we pray for uh, each of the Folks here who may be experiencing some kind of stressfulness in their life. Not the kind of triple overtime kind of stress or single overtime kind of stress as we saw in the football games, but the genuine stress of struggle in relationships and, and struggle over not knowing what the future holds in terms of health and well-being of our members here. We ask, Lord, that you would, um, you would be the comforter that Jesus promised you would be. Lord, I pray for Janice and Marlene and Marlene and Feraldine. Ask, Lord, that uh, in each of their specific situations, that, Lord, you would, you would walk with them, that you would heal their bodies. But most of all, Lord, that they would know that you are there ministering to them, caring for them, that you have not forsaken them. 
too, Lord, we want to ask uh, for safe travels for Anna and for all those people this weekend that are our friends and family who may be on the road. We ask, Lord, your blessing on them and protection. Lord, for all those that we have, uh, friends in the military and friends that are in care homes in various places, we ask your comfort and care for them as well. And these and all things, as we continue to um, to worship you, uh, we commit them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you turn in your hymnals uh, to number 354? soul 
and with all your strength and with all your mind, and you, your neighbor, as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? The Word of God for the people of God. And then, of course, Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan, the one who did not walk on the far side of the road around an injured uh, individual who was traveling through and was robbed and beaten, the one who came to this person's aid and helped him, the one who was not of the same religious persuasion, the one who was not of the same uh, uh, nationality, that person crossed those boundaries and showed love. That's what it means to love. Well, as we go to, uh, to the word of the Lord and to, uh, to hear the preaching of the Lord, let's pray. Father, now may the words of my mouth and the med meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock, my redeemer, in whom I trust. Amen. The key text for today's sermon is Acts 26-28. King Agrippa says, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. This is a sermon that a long, 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 long time ago, John Wesley preached. And this happens to be one of my assignments from last week, so I thought I'd share this as well. Uh, our instruction again was to write a 10 minute sermon out of an hour long sermon. And in our own words, so this is, uh, this is my take on that. What is an almost Christian? In Acts chapter 26, Paul has just explained the gospel in the hearing of King Agrippa. He explained that he was born of a Roman citizen and raised a Pharisee, which is a Jew of certain religious sect, and a high-ranking uh, high individual who persecuted and killed Christians. He further testified how he met the resurrected Jesus on the road to Damascus, being changed from a persecutor of Christians to an apostle among the Christians, a teacher, an evangelist. In conclusion, Paul asked the king to testify that he also is a believer of the prophets. Do you believe the prophets? He said, I know you do. And in verse 28, Agrippa replies, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. Another translation reads, a little more and your arguments would make me a Christian. Agrippa suggests that while he is not yet a follower of Christ, he has at least come to the point of agreeing that he is nearly a Christian. He has listened to Paul's testimony. However, it is absolutely critical that we recognize that an almost Christian is decidedly not one. Since the time of Christ in every age, in every place on the globe where Christianity has sunk its roots, there have been many who were almost persuaded to become Christian, but before God, almost amounts to nothing. And this passage, King Agrippa's words, raises two important questions for us today. What is almost Christian? And secondly, what is altogether Christian? 
Our purpose here today is to look inwardly and examine ourselves to determine if we are true Christians or not. And then how might we respond to that determination? For some, becoming Christian doesn't take much more than a call to repent from their sins and believe in Jesus Christ. They have waited their whole lives to hear the good news that Jesus died to remove their sins. To save them. Convinced of their shortcomings, they have humble opinions of their behavior and their thought life. They unknowingly have already been convicted of the Holy Spirit. They recognize that they need a change, a new start. They know they need saving, although they are unaware such an opportunity exists. They simply need to hear the gospel message of God's love and mercy through Jesus. They are sold. They are faithful and obedient servants of Christ from day one. Others need years of persuasion. It takes them a long time to discover their need for a Savior, and longer still before they realize that simple belief isn't the only aspect of saving faith that is required for true salvation. It's not enough to believe. Even the demons believe and shudder, James the Apostle reminds us. They think that it's good enough to have one foot in the world and the other in the church. Those who believe like this spend their entire life making sure they look the part. Sure, they go to church, put something in the offering plate. They might even serve in a minimal capacity, to volunteer, they would volunteer occasionally but not for anything that might require a huge commitment, just enough to look good. Around their non-Christian friends, they are unrecognizable as Christians. Jesus calls these people hypocrites, actors, whitewashed tombs even. They have a form of godliness, but deny its power. <clears throat> You have the outside of what you think is a Christian, but inwardly, however, you are proud and always insist on being Christian on your own terms. Some may be in this room today who have asked, you would say that you believe in Jesus, but then there's always that caveat, but I don't have to go to church every week to believe, or, but I'm not one of those radical Jesus freaks. Or, I could do without the candles, the hymnody, the liturgy. You qualify your identity as a Christian by what you are willing to do or not do. This is almost Christian. There is also no such thing as trying to become a Christian. You can't fake it till you make it. Either be a Christian or don't be a Christian. Almost Christian isn't any closer to being one than being anti-Christian. Years ago, one of my college roommates takes me to Wichita to a youth event. And there I meet this huge man. His name is Ernest. And he has a deep love for Christ, a deep singing voice, and a powerful bear hug. And so he not only shook my hand, but he hugged me. And our mutual friend introduces us. And the first thing that Ernest asks me is, Nathan, do you love the Lord? I'm caught off guard. I, I'd never been asked that question before. So I answered, uh, yeah. <laughs> I lied. I was playing a role. I was an actor, a hypocrite. Sure, I went to church. I put a dollar or two in the offering. I didn't cuss much. I didn't hang out with the, with the obvious partiers. It took me a long time to sort out what that question, Nathan, do you love the Lord, really, mean, really meant. 
I was almost Christian. I did not repent of sin. I didn't love the Lord. I avoided good works as much as I could and only participated in weakness or in wickedness when no Christians were looking. A fine example of an almost Christian. An altogether Christian, on the other hand, first of all, doesn't do evil. This person has repented from sin, hates it, listens to the Holy Spirit's conviction, flees even sin sinful thoughts and attitudes and actions as though his or her life depends on it. First, doesn't do evil. Secondly, the alt altogether Christian is constantly looking for ways to do good. Serving in the church, visiting someone who is hurting, feeding the poor, encouraging someone who is having a bad day, explaining the good news about Jesus with someone who doesn't know him. An altogether Christian is looking for ways to do good. Thirdly, because of Christ's loving forgiveness, the altogether Christian cultivates a deeper relationship with God. This is the love spoken of in Luke 20, or Luke chapter 10, verses, verse 27. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Any faith that fails to bring about the turning from sin, a rich love for Christ, and a walk that is characterized by good works and the avoidance of evil is no faith at all. It is half-baked deception. The altogether Christian is the opposite of these. God doesn't want your dollar or two in the offering plate. Keep it in your wallet. He wants your heart. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. If you value Christ, he will have your heart. So what to do? Jesus loves you. Has God's Spirit shown you your sin? Are you like I was? A fake? A hypocrite? An almost Christian? If so, it's time to lay down your sin, to turn away from it, to repent. Lay your heavy burden down at the foot of the cross. Be set free from that life there is no better time than today to receive God's forgiveness and begin a new life in this grace. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Your eternity hangs in the balance. As we prepare for the offering, I would invite you to pray the prayer that is in the offering or in the bulletin with me. Shall we pray? Mighty God, you faithfully uphold and guide us through times of difficulty and uncertainty. You show us steadfast love. Thank you for the kindness we have received through your church. Lead us to grow in gratitude so that we will gladly share our gifts. Bless these offerings to sustain our mission to those in need in our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
back in one piece. We appreciate God guiding you safely. If you would all now please remain standing and turn to hymn number 389, Freely, Freely.